Hey everybody, welcome back to another Let's Paint Live. Tonight we are going to be painting Mermaid Tail, which is a really beautiful Little Mermaid inspired painting that I'm really excited to teach you guys how to do tonight. So Jessie was originally supposed to teach this painting. I'm filling in for her tonight, so um, we lost one redhead, but you get the other redhead, which is very fitting for tonight's painting. Um, so just like always, you will want to have your Let's Paint Live kit with you. Um, hey if, if you don't know about our Let's Paint Live kit, tonight, it is a really great kit. Once you go ahead and pick that up, you can go to plaidonline.com or any of, um, I guess, our plaid YouTube channel, and you can go back and rewatch all of our Let's Paint Live paintings. And with our Let's Paint Live kit, which comes with a uh, great variety of folk art acrylic paints and our 10 piece artist variety brush set, then you will have the capability to paint along with any of our Let's Paint Live paintings, which is um, a really cool deal. So, uh, without further ado, oh, I do want to mention, Caitlin is in the studio with us, so if you have any questions or any comments throughout our live stream, then make sure to comment them down below, and Caitlin's going to be moderating all of your questions and comments and uh, relaying some over to me. Okay, so let's get started by just running through our supply list, making sure that you have everything um, that you'll want to have alongside you in order to paint this painting with me tonight. So, from our Folk Art Let's Paint Live kit, we have Folk Art Aqua, Lime Green, Daffodil Yellow, Cardinal Red, Brilliant Ultramarine, Coffee Bean, Bright Pink, Classic Green, Navy Blue, Wicker White, and then we have three uh, Folk Art Specialty paints that I'm really excited to use tonight. We have Glitterific Red, Glitterific Neon Lime, and Glitterific Fine Aqua. Um, three really beautiful specialty colors in our folk art line that I'm excited to show off for you guys tonight. Um, one more thing, I know we're going to have some questions about it. There was a pattern listed in our supply page. Um, Caitlin went ahead and commented the pattern. Um, it's in the description of our video. So if you're looking for that pattern and you can't find it, then just go to this description of the video that you're watching and there will be a link for you to download it and print it out there. So we're also going to want to have a 12 by 12 um, canvas panel. You can go ahead and find this one on platonline.com under our surfaces tab. It's a really um, great surface to have on hand. Uh, it's super, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, versatile. It works for a lot of different projects. It's a really great surface to have. Um, and then we also have some transfer paper, of course our pattern, some painter's tape, a pencil, and some scissors, and a blow dryer. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to apply to our palette tonight is some wicker white. And I'm going to make about a 2 to 1 ratio, 2 parts wicker white to 1 part aqua. And I'm going to take a th uh, three quarter inch flat brush. I'm going to mix these two colors together until they're really well combined. Maybe let's add a little bit more white to the mix. Okay, so with our mixed up light aqua color, I'm gonna go ahead and start filling in kind of like the top third of our canvas here. And as you can see in our finished painting, um, we're kind of working at a curve. So keeping that in mind when I apply all of my layers of color. So I'm gonna start about here and curve up. 
and then fill that in with big sweeping strokes. Like that. Bring a little bit more here. There we go. Okay, so I'm not going to rinse my brush just yet. Right below our uh, light aqua mixing, I'm just going to apply some aqua to our palette. Actually, I'm going to apply a little bit further down. Okay, I'm not gonna rinse my brush. It's okay that we have a little bit of light aqua on our three quarter inch flat brush right now. I'm gonna dip my brush into my aqua and then starting at the corner here, I'm gonna move my brush kind of following the length of or following the point of the other corner. Then lastly, while I still have a little bit of that aqua on my brush, I'm going to apply some Brilliant Ultramarine to my palette. And I'm gonna mix about a one-to-one -one ratio of my Brilliant Ultramarine to my aqua. And then we're gonna fill the bottom third with that aqua and ultramarine color. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to offload my brush as much as I can. Take a paper towel if you need to. And what I mean by offloading is I'm gonna try to remove as much paint from my brush as I can. I'm gonna start with my most recently wet paint. I'm gonna kind of follow the line where it touches the aqua and I'm just kind of running my brush in between those two colors back and forth trying to kind of blend those two colors together. And something that's really gonna help with this is just dipping your brush in a little bit of water, wetting your brush, and that's really gonna help those two colors start to form together and create a beautiful blended look. And I'm kind of just touching right where those two colors meet, a little bit above and a little bit below. Take more water onto your brush if you need it.
I'm gonna do the same thing. Make sure there's not a lot of paint on your brush, but also re-wetting my brush at the same time with these top colors. And because it's been quite a while since we used that light aqua, I'm just gonna apply a little bit more on my brush and make sure that my brush is pretty damp. Just going in between those two colors, really blending them together. You can see we're making big, broad strokes. We're not trying to be choppy. We're not stopping in the middle. We're making a plan that once we touch down on our canvas, we can't lift off until we've reached the other side. And that's gonna give you these really beautiful blended um, looks instead of something more choppy. Come a little bit more down here. Okay, so we're left with something like this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. Clean it off. And now I am going to take my half inch flat brush and I'm going to take some of the existing colors that we've already mixed. So for instance, I'm going to dip it a little bit in my, to my light aqua color. And I'm going to just kind of make some uh, brush strokes like this, really loose, uh, and painting them onto my canvas until I run out of paint. So, um, you know, don't be so quick to reload your brush with paint. We're gonna keep painting these until we run out of paint. Some kind of coming off the canvas. Christine wants to know if you've gone on your cruise yet. Cruise? Were you not gonna go on a I cruise? I don't think so. Maybe you have me mixed up with Jesse. <laughs> I would love to go on a cruise. That sounds really awesome. Instead, I'll just have to keep um, painting my mermaid paintings, dreaming about cruises. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do that with all of these colors. Keeping in mind, um, you know, the more loose, the better. So I'm painting these um, until my brush like really runs out of paint. I'm not too quick to reload. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit about my Ultramarine. And I'm not rinsing my brush in between. That way we get these really beautiful um, kind of blended colors. Looks like they're all supposed to be a part of the ocean. I think I'm gonna stop there. That's a pretty good background so far. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. dry it off and now I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry this so that it's nice and dry for our next step Our canvas is nice and dry. Now is where our pattern comes into play. So uh, just a reminder for all of you, if you're just now tuning in, 
We do have a pattern for this painting. Caitlin went ahead and put it in the description of the video that you're watching. So go ahead and click that link. It'll bring you to platonline.com where you'll see a page where you can go ahead and download and print this pattern for yourself for free. Okay, so the two things we're gonna need are a pattern, which look like this, and some transfer paper, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and cut our pattern a little bit more to size, so that it's nice and easy to place on our canvas. And all we want is the mermaid. You have um, lots of beautiful bubbles that are in our pattern, but all we want is just the mermaid. Doesn't have to be perfect. Here's what mine looks like. Okay, great. So if you've never used transfer paper before, I'll go ahead and give you a little demo. What you'll need is your pattern, your transfer paper, and a pencil or any type of sharp tool. I like to use a pencil because then I can see where um, I've already traced my pattern. But there's gonna be kind of like a um, chalky side and then a smooth side. And we want to place our chalky side down. That's what's gonna lead the pattern. But if you're not totally sure, it's always good to test it on like a little scrap piece of paper or something. And you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but you see that little tick mark? Um, that is the pencil marking that I left. So we know that that is the side that we want to place down on our canvas, if that makes sense. So we want this to be nice and flat. And in order to keep it from moving around, I'm just gonna secure it with some painter's tape at the top and at the bottom. And you're absolutely sure you didn't go on a cruise. Yes. <laughs> I, I wish I had gone on a cruise. No cruises for me, though. She said um, she thought that you were going for your birthday. Oh, no. Maybe I made a funny joke about wanting to go on a cruise. It was just my birthday, so you're half right, Christy. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so now that our transfer paper is down, we're gonna place our pattern, make sure that it's only touching the transfer paper. I'm gonna secure a little piece of tape here so that it doesn't wiggle around. We want it to stay in the same place. Maybe one more piece for good measure. Okay, so now what we wanna do is now we wanna trace our mermaid to our um, canvas here. So I'm gonna start with the body starting at the hand. the belly, get the little brassiere, let me know if you guys have seen the new Little Mermaid live action movie. That's what this was um, inspired by. I haven't gotten a chance to see it yet, but that's definitely on my list. So I'm not going to worry about the scales in the tail. I just want the basic shape of the tail and we're going to do our own zhuzhing to it. But, you know, if you want to trace the scales, then by all means, feel free, but I'm not going to. I'll get the lines in the fin of the tail. So just a good little reference to have. And then lastly, we're gonna get her hair. And 
I'm going to get the um, these beautiful lines in her hair too. The beautiful beachy waves. Okay. All right. So now we're going to take off our pattern as well as our transfer paper. And I'll uh, raise this a little bit so that you guys get a really good view. But you can see that um, our transfer paper marked all of the lines of our pattern. It's a little bit hard to see because the transfer paper I used is a little bit of a lighter color. We can see that gr those gray lines, it just transferred the exact pattern that we needed, which is great. Okay. So next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to apply a little bit of coffee bean onto our palette. And right below that, I'm gonna add some titanium white. Or I'm sorry, wicker white. So if you've ever done any type of color mixing before, you know that you wanna kind of be um, what's the word I'm looking for? You want to be cautious about adding a darker color to a light color because you can always add more, but it's harder to take away. So keeping that in mind, we want to have a really beautiful, warm, dark skin complexion for our mermaid. Um, she's inspired by the new little mermaid, Halle Berry, who has a really beautiful, rich, dark skin complexion. So we're going to try to um, mix a color that's similar to that. So I'm gonna take some of my titanium, I'm sorry, I keep saying that, my wicker white, and then a little bit of my coffee bean. And you know, skin tones can be a little bit tricky, so um, if you're having trouble with it, just kind of keep playing with it. So that's a little bit too light. So let's add a little bit more of our coffee bean to get a richer tone. That's a little bit more to what I'm looking for. And just a reminder, you can get the pattern in the description on YouTube. Great. And our YouTube is Plaid Crafts, if you're watching on Facebook. Okay, so I'm gonna take uh, my number eight flat brush, and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill in the um, like the belly of our mermaid. I'm gonna hold it so you guys can still see. get the arms What's your favorite underwater creature? Oh, you know what, Caitlin? We talked about this last week when we were painting oh, really? our crab. <laughs> Maybe Katie said their favorite was an octopus. Oh. I think my favorite is a whale. What about you? Mm, I think seahorses are kind of cool. Seahorses, that's what some people said last week. That's a good answer. <laughs> um, if, and if you don't know about our crab painting and you're watching this now, um, go check out, we, last week we painted a uh, coastal crab, which is a really fun beachy um, crab painting. Very summery. We're painting a lot of marine life this month, huh? Yeah. 
But that one was really fun, um, and you can find that on our Facebook and on our YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna, sorry, let me know if my head's in the way. You're good. Painting the face. Oh, Beverly said manatee. I take That's back my one. seahorse. <laughs> Manatees are definitely my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I do like a manatee as well. Okay, so we have the face and the body. That is um, the two areas of skin that we were wanting to paint right at this moment. So now I'm going to, I'm not rinsing my brush yet but I'm taking a little bit of that coffee bean and a little bit of the um, you know, medium brown color that we just mixed. So I, um, essentially I'm just kind of darkening the color we just mixed with a little bit more of that darker brown. Maybe a little bit more coffee bean. Like that. So we get just a little bit of a darker brown color. And then what I wanna do is either taking a small flat brush, a round brush, a liner brush, I'm gonna hit all of the shadows. Um, so, you know, our light source is here. So these are where our highlights are gonna be. Everything that touches here, like touches the top first. So the top of her shoulders, the top of her hair, this section of her tail, anything that touches the light first. So anything that's on the bottom of the light, that's where our shadows are gonna live, if that makes sense. So we're thinking her chin, her neck here, cause she's kind of covered. Um, so keeping with that in mind, I'm gonna paint some thin lines that are gonna represent those shadows. Um, and one thing I want you guys to remember when you're doing line work like this, the harder you press down with your brush onto your canvas, the thicker your line is going to be or the wider your line is going to be. And the lighter you press down on your canvas, the less pressure you apply, the thinner your line is going to be. So keeping with that in mind, we're going to kind of press lightly at her wrist, creating a thin line, press a little bit heavier when we come to the elbow heavy and then um, thinner and lighter pressure when we come up to her armpit, if that makes sense. And I'm just gonna mirror the same thing. So thinner at the armpit, heavy at the elbow, and then thinner as we come to her wrist again. I'm gonna get um, the left side of her belly thicker as we come down to the tail, thicker as we're at the corner of her tail, and then as we cross, gets lighter. Do you think you can bring it closer to the yeah, camera? of course. So kind of like that, you guys. And then here too, we're creating a little shadow on her neck and a little shadow on her chin. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. And then next, I'm going to apply some lime green onto my palette. And taking my number eight flat brush again, we're going to fill the entirety of her tail with our lime green. Let me know if my head gets in the way, Caitlin. Okay, I'll let you know. Thanks. I've been known to do that. <laughs> 
I'm not too worried about the lines we traced in the tail because I'm going to kind of do my own freeform design or in the fin, I guess I should say. So I'm just really following the outline shape. Okay, so we got our green tail going on right now. While that's drying a little bit, I'm gonna um, rinse my brush. I'm gonna take some of this um, wicker white and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in her little bralette here with our wicker white. And then I am going to rinse my brush. I am going to apply some Cardinal Red to my palette. And with that red, I am gonna fill in the top sections of her hair with the red. So just kind of tracing this line. Carefully filling in the curves of her face. Okay, and while our brush is still pretty wet, I'm gonna take some of that Cardinal Red, about two thirds Cardinal Red, to about one third Coffee Bean. I'm gonna mix those two together until I get kind of like a dark auburn -y color, like a dark crimson. And I'm gonna fill in the bottom half of her hair with this color.
Okay, like that. I'm gonna rinse my brush. Okay, to my palette, I'm gonna add some classic green. And I'm gonna paint some stripes um, in my tail. Kind of, remember what I said earlier, um, the more pressure you apply to your brush, the wider the lines will be. So I'll show you guys an example. Um, as I kind of start at the tip of the fin, I am applying light pressure. When I get to the middle, I'm applying more pressure. And then when I come up, I'm applying thin pressure again. And you can see, um, you know, how my lines change depending on the amount of pressure I'm applying to my brush. Like that. Okay, so now I have some um, classic green on my number eight brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply kind of like a spouncing motion. And what I mean by that is I'm holding my brush perpendicular to my canvas, and I'm just dab, 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 dabbing onto my canvas. Um, I'm starting at the left side of my tail, following down to the fins, but I'm just kind of dabbing like this, okay? all the way down. And then when you finish that, can you lift it up to the camera? Yes, of course. And we kind of get this very organic looking effect. And I'm kind of running out of paint as I'm coming across to the other side of my tail. So I get a much less opaque um, pattern as I'm crossing over to the left side of my tail. Like that. Okay. Now I'm going to rinse my brush again. And I'm going to apply some bright pink onto my canvas. I'm going to take a small flat brush, but you can use whatever you prefer to make thin lines with. I just prefer to use a small flat brush, but if you would prefer like a round brush or a liner brush, feel free to use that. I'm applying a little bit of water to my hot pink and to my brush, just because I wanna thin down my paint just a little bit to almost make it like an ink-like consistency. So that it's really easy to make really um, um, like concise or precise lines. And taking our hot pink, I am going to, um, if we take out our pattern from earlier, um, the little brassiere that our mermaid is wearing, it kind of had a little outline. So I'm just going to replicate that with my hot pink. Kind of like so. like that. Okay. I'm going to rinse my brush and taking our small flat brush. Now we're going to start creating some coral effects on the bottom of our sea of our ocean floor. So I'm going to dip into my cardinal red and I'm going to start um, at the top point of my coral. I'm uh, working with my number two flat brush. And I'm going to kind of make a squiggle line here. Squiggle line here. And then I'm going to fall down to create the base of our coral. So really, I'm kind of having a root piece of the coral. And I'm having just little squiggly lines that are growing from um, the root of the coral.
Have another red coral over here, maybe a little bit wider. I'm going to start by making the root or the stem or the what you call it. If we have any um, what's the word? I'm, why can't I think of this word? Like people, like scientists who study marine life. Biologists? Oceanologists? I know, why can't I think of it? Marine biologists. Marine, yeah. If we have any like marine botanists and you want to tell me the different sections of coral, that'd be great. Or I guess coral are animals, huh? I guess it, does it depend? Let us know if you yeah. know at home. <laughs> we, we're dying to know. Okay, so I'm creating this coral. Um, I guess I didn't have to rinse my brush, but if you did like me, that's fine. Now I'm going to take some of that um, bright pink and just to some of the sections, I'm just going to go over my cardinal red with my bright pink. And that's really just kind of adding some interest to our, um, you know, sea life. Making it look more interesting. Okay, so if you have some of your light aqua, um, throw back to the beginning that we mixed very um, early on in our demo, I want you to mix half of that with half of your wicker white till we make a really, really pale aqua color. This is going to be another coral color here. Kind of stemming off here. I'll have another piece kind of coming over here. And this is the part where you guys really can just have fun with it. There's a lot of different directions that you can go in when you're creating your little undersea landscape. Um, you know, once you learn how to do all these shapes, once you get a gist of the colors that I'm mixing to create these um, ocean inspired colors, then you get to have a lot of fun um, just seeing what you come up with. Okay, we're looking pretty good, you guys. So now I'm going to take some of my daffodil yellow, and I'm going to go ahead and add that to my palette. And I still have some of my wicker white out, so I'm going to mix a 1 to 1, 50-50 ratio of daffodil yellow and wicker white um, until I get a really beautiful, you know, fairly pale yellow color. And we're going to create with this um, beautiful pale yellow a different type of coral. Um, you know, if Jessie were painting this, she would probably be able to tell you all the different types of coral because she is much more um, wise about ocean life than I am. But we're going to be making these more, um, these wider shaped, kind of tubular shaped coral. So we're kind of just making these longer tubes. Um, we have one in the middle, and then we're kind of curving um, two on mirrored sides. Like so. And then I'm going to have a couple over here. Maybe one just kind of peeking in here. Okay, so while my brush still has some of this yellow on it, I'm just going to take a little tiny pinch of my cardinal red 
and mix it in with my light yellow and if you are ahead of me you know this will create a orange color because yellow and red make orange and with this I'm just going to create some little lines little curved lines at the top of my yellow coral um, just to add some more interest to my painting like so okay and we just about have our painting you guys the last step that we have to do is add some of our glitterific so firstly if you've never used glitterific before um, you use it a lot like you would use any other traditional acrylic paint I'm just going to squeeze some out onto my canvas here I'm going to take my half inch flat brush and I am going to apply my glitterific red with my paintbrush to the red part of our mermaid's hair. Just like so. Oh, beautiful. I love glitterific. It never gets old. Look how pretty that looks. Apply some to our red coral down here. like that. I rinse my brush. Um, another great thing about Glitterific is that you can clean your brushes just like how you would with any other acrylic paint. You just go ahead and rinse them in water. Okay, and next I'm taking my Glitterific. Um, I actually have Glitterific Green, but um, if you wanted to use, we have a really beautiful new Glitterific um, Neon Lime, which is this really poppy, beautiful um, you know, kind of like it says, um, neon lime color, which you can use too. And I'm going to apply that starting at the left side of our tail, going all the way down, and then kind of brushing out to the right side. That is really beautiful. Wow. You can um, add some to your coral too if you want, but I think I'm going to leave that at the tail. And then the reason we chose Glitterific Fine for the water is just because it has a little bit of a more um, subdued look in my opinion. It looks um, very organic, like it just kind of belongs in like open water. So um, the particles of glitter are a little bit smaller, as in the name, Glitterific Fine. So it really is the perfect Glitterific formula for an effect like this. And I'm taking my um, half inch flat brush and I'm going to take that Glitterific Fine. And if you remember in the beginning when we painted some of those brush strokes, not all of them, but I'm just going to go and um, top some of those brush strokes that we made in the beginning with my Glitterific Fine. Just a few. And where can you get the Glitterific? I know Michael's, mm -hmm. our website. Absolutely. And you can definitely find it on plaidonline.com um, under, if you just type in Glitterific into the search bar, we have actually quite a few really beautiful um, Glitterific formulas for you to browse through and kind of find out which Glitterific formula is what you're looking for for your project. So pretty. Really, really beautiful. Okay, one more. All right, and then you end up with a um, really beautiful mermaid tail. 
So, as we are wrapping up our paint night for tonight, I want to give a big thank you for all of you who painted along with me, for all of you who plan to paint along with me. Don't forget that if you decide to um, paint along at home and then you want to post your creations on social media, make sure to hashtag plaid crafts. We're always looking under that hashtag and we'd love to see what you're making. Um, once again, we used our Folk Art Let's Paint kit. Um, you can find that under our Let's Paint um, tab on plaidonline.com, as well as all of our other previous Let's Paint videos that you can go back and watch at your own pace and paint along with us. Um, thank you, Caitlin, for moderating for us tonight. Um, don't forget, if you um, are new here, we do a um, Let's Paint every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, so don't forget to Come back to us next Monday where we will paint another painting in just about an hour. Thank you guys so much for tuning in 